Financial advice, the moment you need it. Log on and watch FoxBusiness.com live, weekdays at 12 noon Eastern. You know, maybe one area where we will actually see a cut in government spending is in defense. President Obama was in Saudi Arabia where he talked again with Saudi King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz. Now, the president is still trying to get support from the Muslim world, so perhaps we won't have to spend as much defending ourselves in the war on terror. But is there a higher cost to us all if he abandons the war on terror completely? Let's ask Jim Michaels. He is on leave as military editor of USA Today to write a book at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. And in just a moment, we're going to be joined by Republican Representative Duncan D. Hunter of California. He is a Marine veteran of three combat tours in the war on terror. So he is well qualified to talk about this. Jim, first to you. We're not even using the phrase, by the way, war on terror anymore. Uh, so we're, we're changing the terminology of this battle that we're in, is that a mistake? Right. Well, David, he, here's, the, here's the thing. It's, it, it, aside from the terminology, the, what the Defense, Defense Secretary Gates has sort of shifted things in the budget so that most of the money is going towards the wars we're fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan. A lot for the uh, uh, drones that have provide, been very effective. Very effective. Very, very effective. good. MRAPs, the armored vehicles, very effective. The problem is this, though, is, the, is that so much of this defense spending is trying to anticipate what's going to happen next. And if there's anything that's held true through the years is we don't know what the next threat is going to be. Well, we, we do know what history has taught us. And we saw a cut down in defense spending from Jimmy Carter when he was in. We saw a cut down in defense spending with uh, Bill Clinton. But, of course, Bill Clinton had the peace dividend, the end of the Cold War. However, he cut back so much spending that some people say we were more vulnerable to the terrorists. Here's the problem. It's so hard hard to turn the tap back on. I mean, in other words, he's gone, he's, he's cut back on the F-22, an advanced fighter, uh, gone from 11 carrier, ba carrier battle groups to 10. How long does it take to go back up? For so long, our advantage has been in technology and firepower. Um, and if you scale that back, it takes an awful long time to, to get it back All up. All right. Well, Congressman Hunter, by the way, we have three uh, people involved with the Marine Corps. Jim was a Marine. Duncan Hunter was a, was a proud Marine. My son's a Marine. So uh, nothing against the rest of the services, Congressman Hunter. But let's just talk about what Jim was saying concerning how difficult it is once you've cut back on defense spending to ratchet it back up again when you need it. Sure. First off, with, with the uh, uh, president out there speaking to, you know, trying to get people on our side, uh, Roosevelt tried that, uh, Eisenhower tried it, Churchill tried it. Talk doesn't work when it comes to uh, fanatics, and that's who we're fighting right now. But this, this defense spending issue is important for two reasons. One, national security, our manufacturing base, the, the way that we make ships, planes, tanks, once that erodes, there's no getting that, that back. There's no retooling that, or it'll, it, it'll take a long time, and we're not going to be prepared for the next war. Two is jobs right now. During this recession, the uh, Army Future Combat Systems, cutting that is, is going to cost roughly 80 to 90,000 jobs. Cutting the F-22, that's going to cost roughly 85 to 95,000 jobs. So if this administration is really intent on fixing the e economy, they would not be, uh, you know, uh, put in the F-22 and the, uh, the Army Future Combat Systems on their chopping block, which they're doing. So I don't think that they're serious about helping out the economy or they wouldn't be making the, these defense cuts. By the way, Congressman, just for folks who don't know, uh, you had two service tours in Iraq and one in Afghanistan. So you really, uh, you really proved yourself as a, as a proud Marine. Uh, what are the folks over there, what are the folks actually fighting in, in this war? And I still call it a war. Uh, do they object to the fact that it's not being called a war by this administration? And it's it, the whole like, concept of us against some people that want to tear us down uh, is, is, is kind of being diminished a little? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, uh, the men and women over there fighting are, are over there for one reason only, and that's to make America safer. That's to, uh, to kill the enemy, make America safer. If this is, is no longer an actual war, then let's pull them all out then. Let's send over State Department guys. Let's send over civilians. Let's send over city managers. But this is a war against radical Islam, against, you know, you can call it the war on terror, but it's truly a war uh, against radical Islam, against a certain type of people that, that have uh, ideas that are, are just as crazy as the Nazis. That's who we're fighting right now. We're going to fight it in Afghanistan, Iraq. We've won in but Iraq, and in my opinion, we have to kill more bad guys in Afghanistan. 
Okay, but Jim, Jim Michaels, you know better than anybody because you've been covering the Defense Department for a long time that there is waste in that department just as there is in any other bureaucracy. Uh, you mentioned the F-22, Jim. I mean, we're fighting a war against terrorists against whom conventional weapons, particularly when it comes to supersonic planes, might not be the best weapon Absolutely. to fight. For the, yeah, for the wars we're fighting now, it is a low-tech war. It's a very labor-intensive war. I mean, the, the, they're growing the size of the Army and the Marine Corps to get more boots on the ground. Uh, absolutely essential over there. But the, the problem is, is that defense spending is not like just-in-time inventory where you can, you know, order widgets and they're, they're on your doorstep in a week or so. These things, this technology and firepower and our, our edge that we've developed uh, takes years to do, and it it is... It's, it is wasteful, but well, I don't know how I should do say it. that yeah. it's, it's not just F-22s. Personnel costs are, are very expensive. It costs a lot to train a Marine, to, to uh, keep them clothed, to keep them uh, with all of the equipment that they need to keep them safe. So uh, personnel costs, we shouldn't cut back on at all, should we? No, and they're growing, they are growing the size of the Army and the Marine Corps, and then you've got to also take care of the wounded warriors and so forth that, that, the, that the country well, owes a great debt to. Is there any sign that in these cutbacks in defense we are actually going to be shortchanging some of the troops that are fighting? No, I, I think we're actually providing for the, uh, the military itself for those, for those personnel costs and those wounded warrior costs very well. What we're, what we're losing out on is our, our uh, future combat ability to fight China, Russia, North Korea, missile defense, big old ground war kind of things. We are fighting terror right now. It's a, a, a low-end war. But we also have to worry about those higher threats, too, those, those uh, peer threats. That's what we're going to be losing out on here because we have to, we have to prepare for uh, both of them, in, in my opinion. It's expensive. There is waste, but we have to do it. We can cut the, that uh, waste away, get after but we ought to be preparing for uh, China, North Korea, and we ought to be preparing against the next terror war at the same time. All right, Duncan Hunter and Jim Michaels, thank you, gentlemen. And it is your last chance to vote. What do you think? More red ink just means more red tape. Is that statement a buy, a sell, or a hold? Text your answer to 369-249. Your results when we return. Make every trade count. Make every investment pay off.